Under the European Green Deal, which carries the long-term goal to reach net zero emissions by 2050, there is a circular economy action plan directly related to digital product passport. The initiative looks to transform the way we produce, consume and utilise products and resources, aiming to reduce waste and extend both resource and product longevity. At the same time, empower consumers to make more informed decisions on product purchases. Digital Product Passport is a tool for collecting and sharing data along its entire life cycle, used to illustrate a product's sustainability, environmental and recyclability attributes. It essentially creates a digital twin and securely records event, transactional and data from across the product's life cycle associated to the physical product via a QR code, barcode or other technology being accessible via a smart device application or similar. Under numerous European Union initiatives, many industries have been prioritised as the first wave to adopt digital product passport. That includes batteries and vehicles, textiles, electronics and information and communication technologies, furniture, plastics, construction and chemicals. Although the final timeline is still being defined, 2026 marks the start of the first industry to adopt digital product passport, batteries, and everyone else is expected to follow suit by 2030. The digital product pass, or what uh, uh, we also call the eco-design for sustainable products regulation, is going to be a regulation, so companies have to do it. Now, companies will see some benefits in doing it because by um, uh, having a product pass for each of your products, you might drive engagement with your consumers. So if your product has a high degree of recyclability, for example, you might engage more and better with your consumers. So it's going to be um, number one, because they have to do it. Number two, because you want to engage with your consumers and tell them how good and, and green your products are. What is going to be difficult uh, for companies to do is to collect all the data. It's going to be a lot of attributes, it's going to be a lot of information on your products that you don't have today in your system. Like the footprint of the product, you know, it depends on the, on the, uh, on the distance that the product was traveling, for example, or the degree of recyclability of our product or the degree of, uh, I mean, how much plastic is in the product. So it's going to be a lot of different elements uh, and collecting all this data uh, is going to be difficult. So I think companies will need systems to be able to uh, collate this data in a, uh, as much as possible automated way. And then they will need means for engaging with the customers because one thing is to have the data, but then you want to open up this data to your end consumers so end consumers know how, how, how good is the, the PEF, the product environment footprint of your product. I think the key challenge uh, is going to be really collecting the data. Um, you will uh, find yourself with a SKU, one product master data, that might have 700 different attributes. Today, one of these products may have maybe 30, 40 fields. In future, one single SKU, one single item is going to have maybe 700 attributes and you need to fill them. And, and that, you know, it's a lot of information to collect. Some of this information is master data, means it's the same for all products. But some of this information is transactional data, means maybe a bottle of Coke has a completely different product environment footprint if it was produced in Mannheim or in Berlin. It's the same bottle, but it's different, uh, different travel and different uh, logistic routes, right? And so that's going to be difficult. It's not only about the master data, it is also about the transactional data related to one of the items. At the end, uh, you will be looking at how to automate the collection of that data. Because you're not going to have people just entering this data in the system. So you will have to have systems and uh, ways of automating all this collecting of the data across the entire supply chain. You know, it, that's uh, going to be a lot of work.
Digital product passport technology is not limited to those markets such as textiles and batteries which are being directly targeted on a European Union level. This technology is open to all companies, regardless of industry, to experiment with and use for long-term business and customer value. For now, the key focus is on sustainability, repairability and recyclability. But as more companies dive into the technology and understand its potential, the use cases and opportunities of the digital product passport will continue to scale, like our solution. O Sapiens Hub for Digital Product Passport. Under the European Green Deal, which carries the long-term goal to reach net zero emissions by 2050, there is a circular economy action plan directly related to digital product passport. The initiative looks to transform the way we produce, consume and utilise products and resources, aiming to reduce waste and extend both resource and product longevity. At the same time, empower